medical saw to cut away the bones of homogenized entertainment. The pendulum swings. An ancient door jam wedges open an interdimensional doorway to a place where paper beings are imbued with the infinite life breath. Beings possessed with fragmental cognizance of the human condition. The deconstruction paper of existential freedom. An expression of the insanity that is life. You want me to do the segue for tonight's musical guest? Wow! Okay. Our house band, Esoteric Autopsy, has just completed their new music video and they wanted to share it with all of you. This is Sandpaper Slip and Slide! Turn the right, we 
I think outer space is fixing to take us out. I spend time nights by in the sky, by and by, often with the help of a little huff and or puff. I give the celestial plane a healthy ponderance. Now, when you look at the moon, what do you see? Uranus! You're spying a different kind of moon, I reckon. No, I'm talking about that big silver ball that hovers above the Earth. The moon. Like what the pie is named for. The moon is covered in craters. Now, it seems to me that those craters were not gently placed upon the moon's surface like the tender tongue kisses from your next door neighbor's older, yet sturdy looking stepmom. Objects flying from beyond the void are zipping through space, lickety split. The slightest acquaintance between the earth and those void zipping objects could be the earth's final curtain call. No encores. Ever. We're down here on this glorious life spear, flush with buxom parolees and Stevie Ray Vaughan bootlegs. Just indulging away on experimental narcotics and passing judgment on all the happy little critters on good lord's green earth. While around the world the underfed and the underlearned folks from the picture shows carry on a macabre charade of weekend at Bernie's as the planetary equivalent of a gunshot victim in your front lawn orbits our existence. And not only do we acknowledge said gunshot victim, but we comment on its beauty and make its rotten corpse a symbol of romance and perpetual hope. It all seems a tad off axis to me, like the cruel reality that life is far and away more brutal than the wisdom any quality sitcom could ever attempt to offer. Your personal conflicts will not be resolved in a neat family-friendly 30-minute morality tale. Conflicts vary over time, and they will leave their mark on your spirit. Smolders flash out. Dust blows through a deceased biome. Ashes swirl. Shoveled dirt fills a grave, a solemn ceremony. No tears. No tears. Some things need to die. Leave a black rose in your mind. Move on. Follow the fox. Fear the fox. Learn its secrets. Study its poker face. Don't be charmed by its beady little eyes, especially not its scheming whiskers. Do get her phone number. Don't call immediately. Make her sweat a little. It's hotter that way. Tastes better that way. Shadows create gaps in information. Bring a flashlight. Always bring a pocket knife, a quart of mezcal, and a map. Swim around a rut 
Otherwise, the undertow will pull you under. Dead weight can get you drowned. Focus! We cannot succeed without a plan. Eyes on the prize. What the hell is the prize? You better know, or figure it out real quick. Tomorrow's yesterday already. Your childhood pediatrician is way older now. Perhaps... God's beat on your life gets more accurate by the moment. You can't dodge his aim in a zigzag formation forever. So try and do something that makes you proud before he cuts you down. So, did you know uh, the Great Pyramid of Giza has eight sides? It's a pyramid? Mm hmm. Thought it had four sides. Hmm. No, nope. The sides uh, of the Great Pyramids are slightly concave, thus creating eight sides. Huh. I do remember hearing most of the Great Pyramid's original exterior is weathered away, but I don't remember ever hearing about it having eight sides. Yep. My hand to your god, eight sides. Don't talk about my god. Sorry. Eight sides, huh? All that ancient stuff is pretty wild. Yeah, it is. Like, uh, there's this evidence based on discrepancies in construction techniques to suggest that structures like the Great Pyramid and, let's say, uh, uh, the, the Parthenon. Uh, see, uh, there's evidence that suggests that Huge structures like the Great Pyramid and the Parthenon were actually built on sites of much older and more advanced structures. The thing that gets me is it's really only in the last hundred years or so that our technology has advanced to the point where building some of these ancient structures wouldn't be an absolute backbreaking feat. Uh, the Kilasa Temple in India, for example, is this giant temple carved from a single rock on a mountainside. 200,000 tons of volcanic rock were removed during the temple's construction. Kilasa covers more square footage than the Parthenon. Sounds like a pretty cool temple. And, supposedly, Kilasa was built using only basic hand tools between 757 and 783 AD. When you say supposedly, <laughs> because you don't buy the hand tools or the date of construction? Well, I mean... We can get into that, but I don't want to keep you here all day. This hike is going to be a short one, I think. Is it? Because I can't remember ever doing anything but hiking with you. Huh. That's... Is this my life? That's funny. When you when you put it that way... Do I have dreams? Do I have a family? I don't... I... Do I exist outside of this hike? I don't know anything... Will we just put on this earth... Walking with to you ...to hike either. together? Oh, well. No goal... No direction? That's not just a terrible thing. Nah, I mean, I'm having fun. Yeah, me too. Alright, well, uh... So, uh, because you don't buy the hand tools or the data construction? No way. Younger dry ass all day. Yeah, whatever that means. Kilasa vanishes from history until the late 17th century when the local ruler of the time felt that the temple has offended his gods and or contradicts his laws. The ruler orders the temple destroyed. That sucks. Like when they rediscovered Caligula's barge, then it was just burned to ashes in World War II? Eh, wait, I'm not finished. One thousand oh, men over a course of three years could not put a scratch into Kilasa. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's estimated that there are over 30 million Sanskrit carvings in the temple, and none of them have been translated. Stuff like that sure raises some questions about our history. Ha! <laughs> it sure does. <laughs>